Okay. Um. Shall we start? Um. I hope the network is okay. Um. And if you encounter some network problem, and also if you have a question in the middle, uh, please ask me or send me a message via WeChat as usual. So today we are going to talk about um, spontaneous symmetry breaking, curve symmetry breaking and also um, Higgs model. And then uh, for Pascal and Schroeder, uh, actually it's kind of separate sections, uh, chapters. So 11.1 19.3 and 20.1 and then actually Schwartz gives really nice um, explanation about uh, these topics so relevant part is uh, section uh, chapter 128 and it's famous that the Weinberg 19.2 um, explain the carosymmetry breaking uh, very very uh, uh, detail manner, in detail manner. So, so if you're interested, you can just take a look at it. Um, so, and also, um, from next time, I'm going to talk about the standard model. So, and then if I start talking about the standard model, it's a bit more like a story rather than like a learning uh, QFD. But uh, today, we will set up some uh, how is it, framework for standard model. And we will talk about a little bit about the particle physics too today. Thank you. 
Um, lots of fun. So last time, so we talked about uh, the just idea of spontaneous symmetry breaking um, in, by using D2 symmetry. So today, so we would talk about so-called uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking. Um, so Goldman's uh, Goldstone theorem. Um, goes, so given a, so so some theorem that this so the um, so if you consider spontaneous symmetry breaking of the uh, continuous uh, global symmetry. Symmetry, symmetry. Then this will lead to the so-called existence of a massless particle. Existence of a massless particle. So-called uh, number. So that's why first we will learn. So last time we talked about uh, Z2 symmetry, uh, Z2 global symmetry, but by considering uh, a potential uh, which takes a on form, right? So Z2 means uh, Z. Um, there is a Z2 symmetry by just rotating this axis, okay? flipping uh, this axis. Uh, but this is not the continuous. So to consider continuous, so this is almost uh, answering the question to the problem two of homework. So actually, problem two of homework is very easy. I'm going to almost answer the question. Uh, so, uh, so let's consider also oh, called it's called on mono. So it's already in on mono. It's almost an answer to the question, but it's okay. Um, at this moment, it's really difficult to create a uh, suitable homework. Uh, let's see. So if phi is phi one, uh, no phi n. Um, and then, so the, these are real scalar and real scalars. Um, then the potential takes a following form. E of phi is uh, 1 over 8. Um, uh, G So this is the form, and uh, especially so the people often write down this one is uh, Mexican hat. It's really difficult to write down. Let, let, let me. I'm not. I think I'm not good at the drawing picture. So that uh, let's let me try. <laughs> so so D is this one, and then we have um, uh, so So here you have phi one and phi two, for instance, and then so here you have some uh, little bit of bump in the in the middle, like this. Then um, lowest part of the potential is something like like this way. 
So lowest part of potential. So this this uh, the way I have drawn is not that good, but uh, this is often called Mexican hat. Potential. I mean, you can just search the internet in Mexican hat, and then how does it look like? You can just look up. Uh, take a look at the internet. How does it look like? So you can just imagine how how it likes. Okay. Um, so if you if you don't understand my uh, my, my, my my drawing, so just look at the figure. Um, figure eleven point two in test and shadow. Okay. So so this is called the that makes a hard. So that the um, so the potential has the some minimum around the uh, this is actually in sphere S S N sphere and but the, at the origin it's it's unstable unstable how to say um, un, unstable point critical point unstable critical point okay. And then, so of course, as you can easily see that the, the Lagrangian has a symmetry. Uh, symmetry. Uh, actually, I did transpose. So uh, phi one to phi n is mapped to um, the S O N O N matrix um, phi one. So the Lagrangian is invariant, is invariant, invariant on the OM symmetry. That's why it's called OM model. Okay. Um, so this is classical Lagrangian. But as I mentioned last time, uh, like in Z2 model, as in Z2 model, uh, of course, so let, let, let me tell it. So if you take the n is with 2, O2 is Z2. Okay? So it's just higher rank model. Um, so that the. Um, so as in the Z2 oh, Z2 model, so once you start from origin, of course, it, it's unstable of uh, critical point, but then move to the um, minimum, uh, one of the minimum of the potential, so that the, uh, for instance, one can take the following to the vacuum expression value of phi, phi zero is equal to zero, so, 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 zero, and then And this is n minus one. Okay. Uh, chapter n minus one. So if the the potential goes to the minima of the um, sorry, the vacuum just take the minima of the potential, which you for instance you can take the following minima, where the uh, phi, of course the this b is the same as this b. And then, so if you, you can just expand the phi as the, the following way. So the pi uh, b plus air, uh, air, okay, such that the uh, pi is of course pi one, so, 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 pi and minus one. So you can just take the expansion. So of course now assume the a depends on x, pi also depends on x. Okay. So you can just take the following the expansion around the minima. So you expand around expand phi around phi zero, like this way. Then so we can just take uh, the potential, just substitute this one into here, uh, here, and the potential is takes the following form from half g b square 
um, a square plus one half um, pi square plus a square here plus one over eight uh, g um, pi square plus theta square. Okay. okay, so that's the uh, potential when you expand around this in uh, with this minimum. And okay, you can see that the so this term is a mass of A. Okay, this term is mass of A. So essentially, this A is just C uh, the the quadratic quadratic the normal direction quadratic. Uh, you can just approximate around the minimum around here, and this can approximate just uh, one half uh, GB square theta square. So therefore, mass of A, uh, mass of yeah. So the mass of A is equal to is this one. However, as you can see, if you see that the um, pi, there is no mass term for pi, okay? So the pi direction indeed, there is a n minus one, um, n minus one massless particle, which is the direction, uh, which is a direction to, which is a direction to, how to say, tangent to the, the, um, the, the the sphere sphere that is the minima of this potential and in fact so by just taking this minima the symmetry is broken so to the O n to O n minus one so that the O n minus one acts O n minus one acts only pi, but not a. Okay, so pi one to pi n pi n minus one is shackled by O n minus one, whereas the original uh, O n shackled everything. Okay, so therefore there is a symmetry breaking from O n to O n minus one. Okay. Um, and you, one can just take that the so um, one can take that the it's called corset model. I mean, uh, maybe you you mentioned, but uh, so it's a Lie group O n divided by O n minus one. Okay? So this is equal to S e. Let me this one. Huh? Yeah, yeah, S n minus one sphere. So this sphere, so this red part is indeed is S n minus one. Um, so therefore, sometimes this O n minus one is a stabilizer, stabilizer of this vacuum. Even though it's sharp for zeros, right? It, even if it's sharp for zero, it doesn't change the vacuum. You understand what I mean? The O n minus one acts on zeros, but even if shuffle zero, it's still zero. Therefore, the vacuum stays as, as it is here. Okay? Whereas the if you enhance the, the, the symmetry O n, this B can move to somewhere else. Okay? So this somewhere else means that the, this B can go to some this some any point of this region, which is a sphere, n minus one dimensional sphere. So this is called stabilizer, and this is called corset model. Sometimes it's called homogeneous space, anyway. Um, corset model. And then the back here takes the, this corset model. And then the cost of the breaking symmetry is massless particle, massless mode, which is called mass boson boson. And in this case, massless boson boson is this pi. Okay. Then the n minus one, um, massless particle. As you can see, there is no mass term for pi. 
in, in, in the potential. Therefore, this one, this pi, is, is number for some volume. Um, in general, so in general, so in general, so the so number so number of boson boson is n minus one is dimension of um, O n minus dimension. Uh, actually, dimension of this positive model, which is dimension of n, dimension is of n minus 1, and as you can easily see that this is n, n minus 1 divided by 2. Is it true? Uh, I think it's okay. And then minus n minus 1, n minus 2, divided by 2. Okay. And then, as you can see, this is equal to n minus 1. So, therefore, so the, this dimension of this constant model is indeed the number of the Gaussian boson, Gaussian, uh, number, number of Gaussian boson uh, model. So, it's very simple. And in general, um, so this almost answers the problem too. So you can just fill out the detail. Um, so in general, more generally, uh, once you just consider some Lagrangian, so if you consider the, um, if you consider, um, so there is. A Lagrangian with uh, with G symmetry uh, symmetry, which means that if you have potential um, uh, of phi, you have to uh, be some G phi, G axon, and G is element of the Lie group G. Any any G. Invariant, so the invariant under this uh, uh, transformation, then the spontaneous symmetry breaking is that the um, so the so this G is broken to uh, H, which is subgroup of G. So this is the uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking by picking back here, okay? Picking back here as, a, as we saw like this way. Okay? Then um, so this means that the so if you if you pick back here, phi, phi naught, okay? phi naught, um, phi naught is invariant under uh, phi naught is equal to uh, h phi naught, where the h is inside h. Okay. Okay. Any, so this is the spontaneous symmetry breaking. So as we saw. So O n acts on this phi naught doesn't change the vacuum, right? The similar thing. Then, if this is the case, uh, if this is the case, the um, quantum Q theory there exist, uh, they exist, they exist a uh, number goes from both uh, mode, mass less mode, uh, less uh, bosons. And number the existence uh, the number is equal to dimension g minus dimension h. So this is the uh, statement of uh, um, Gaussian theorem. Okay. So this is the statement of Gaussian theorem, and what we are going to prove from that. The proof is very simple. Proof is very very simple. It's kind of so is the network okay today? Just tell me. Um, tell me who 
if the network is okay today. Um, so let's prove. Uh, so this is Gaussian Serra. Okay. So this everything is included in Gaussian Serra. Okay. okay. So this is Gaussian Serra. Okay, it's okay. Good. So let's prove that. So this proof is very simple. So consider theory of a uh, real scalar um, um, with scalars on phi phi r then uh, there's a um, r plus um, sum of uh, delta phi is equal to b phi. So this is uh, the g symmetry where the delta phi is given by uh, sum of uh, chi a and k. So this is the one two dimension dimension of g. So this is generator of the generator of the. Um, here you can consider the the, the, the the algebra because it's an infinitesimal, okay? And uh, chi a depends on x and so on. Um, since okay, so this is the or maybe uh, should I mention of the. Okay, so then, then that's that's the um, so so this is a G symmetry. So this is this is infinitesimal change of this this version, okay, of this version. And then uh, T is the yeah. I mean maybe this is a Hermitian generator. G symmetry. So at the uh, if you take the derivative with respect to um, phi uh, delta phi, this is zero. So some, uh, delta phi r uh, of b of phi. Um, then uh, T a of phi r. Is equal to uh, when R is equal to zero. Okay, so that's the for any for any for any for any for any R uh, A one of the dimension of uh, dimension of G. Okay, um, so that's the uh, the symmetry we will have, and then. Um, so we're interested in the, uh, the so this is this is uh, the the just statement of that the um, statement that statement that the um, this doesn't uh, this is the environment potential the environment of the G thing. And then, so uh, what we are going to do is just take derivative with respect to uh, S again. Okay. So this is uh, B is uh, G environment. Okay. G environment. Then you take the delta delta phi S again. Okay. Um, phi S again. 
so that the uh, to to this one to apply delta delta pi is um, again then what you would get is r delta v delta pi s delta pi r okay um, v v uh, and t a pi of r plus uh, sum of r okay delta v uh, delta pi r uh, T A R S okay, is equal to Z. So just apply um, the S phi is still belong here, we will get this. Okay. And then once you pick um, the back here, so back here, back here phi zero is that the once you pick uh, pick back here phi zero. Then, so the vacuum phi zero is the derivative with respect to phi at phi is equal to phi zero is always zero. Okay? So this is the meaning of a vacuum. Okay? It's the first derivative, it's critical point. First derivative of potential is zero. Is that a vacuum always? So it's a, it's a, the minimum of the potential. Okay? Then, so once you pick the uh, set, this one, this one is. This evaluate, uh, evaluate phi is equal to phi zero, and also here phi is equal to phi zero. Then, of course, this is minimal, so therefore this term is zero. Okay. And what's left is this one. Okay. So therefore, this will give you that the, the um, delta v uh, delta phi r phi delta phi s at phi equal to phi zero uh, t a um, phi zero r sum of r sorry maybe I should put the a in upstairs sorry in upstairs is equal to zero okay because the we pick the uh, phi the, the vacuum so therefore the second term vanishes okay and then look at this then, um, so then, um, so as you can see, you see that this matrix uh, delta v delta phi r delta phi s uh, phi s and phi equal to phi zero is indeed m r s is called the mass uh, mass matrix. So this is called Hessian, something like Hessian. Always the potential, second derivative potential will give you mass matrix. It's a symmetric matrix. Symmetric matrix so that you can always diagonalize with real eigenvalue. Okay. So that was, that was also a mass parameter. Okay. At the back here. Okay. And then, um, so therefore, this means that the uh, sum, so this, So this uh, equation tells that the some mat matrix times some vector will give you zero. Okay? Mass matrix times vector will give you zero means that there is some zero eigenvectors. Okay? So that of which means some mass eigenvalue uh, is zero indeed from this one. And let's look at how many there, there is such a vector. Okay. And then, so TA can be decomposed in the following way, T, a small ti plus TA hat, such that the ti acts on phi, phi, uh, acts on phi zero, phi zero is equal to zero. So which means that the, uh, I don't, there's no space to erase. Okay, let, 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 me, let me erase this part. So this means that the um, in the ON model, so so you pick phi zero is equal to zero to, to, to zero and b, right? And there is the O n minus one symmetry acts on this and these entries, n minus one entries. Okay? 
This oil minus one doesn't do anything to phi zero. Even though they sharp for phi zero, phi zero is invariant. Therefore, this T i is in in the case of OL model is the, the element of O n minus one. Okay? Even though they act on the, the vacuum, it doesn't do anything, which means zero. Okay? So therefore, so this is the um, the the symmetry that that left after the symmetry breaking. Okay, so the so therefore Ti is uh, the Lie algebra of H. What's left? Okay. And then uh, Ta, so Ta hat is indeed non-zero. So which means that the um, it acts on or, 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 or in this last entry. You know, this B is moved to somewhere else. Okay. So therefore, a hat is indeed uh, um, indeed uh, dimension is equal to one dot 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 dimension of G G mod H. Okay. G mod H. This is constant model. Um, okay. So. So the so even if the uh, a is in the direction of h, this element is zero. Okay, T, small t i acts on phi naught is zero. So therefore, this equation automatically satisfied. Okay. However, uh, if you pick this capital T a is t a hat, this vector is no longer non zero. No longer zero. So therefore, it's non trivial vector. Non-trivial vector acts on symmetric matrix will give you zero, which means that the, this vector has a zero eigenvalue. Okay? So therefore, um, so this meant uh, that equation here, so equation here will tell you that the um, uh, TA hat by not has zero. Eigen value of matrix MRS. So this is mass matrix. Okay. So mass matrix times this TA phi naught, TA hat phi naught, you get zero, which means it, it is a zero mass. So therefore, these are. This means that the TA hat phi naught is uh, non, uh, non correspond massless R process uh, mode. And as you can see, a hat runs from one to dimension G mod H. So which means that the the number of the uh, massless mode is the dimension of G mod H. Okay. Which means uh, dimension G minus H. Dimension Okay, so that's the statement of the uh, um, Nandu uh, Gorson theorem. Any questions so far? It's very simple, uh, simple proof. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the so-called color symmetry breaking. Um, so let's consider the following uh, Lagrangian. 
Um, let's consider following my mention. Uh, kind of symmetric breaking. So people often write down that Kara is this one. Kara symmetric breaking. Like this one. Um, so let's consider Lagrangian, which is a following form um, uh, phi d slash i d slash i d slash zero zero phi d. Uh, where phi is indeed uh, u d. u is up fork and then d is down fork. Okay. Um, Therefore, this can be just write down u bar i d slash u plus d bar i d slash u. Um, then, so this has a Lagrangian has a symmetry. Lagrangian has a symmetry such that the phi is map to so called so called e to the i Sayer vector times t. Um, or maybe, maybe I should set TA, TA. Plus uh, gamma 5, um, gamma 5, um, sorry, I, gamma 5, um, Sayer A, um, P, P. So act on psi. So here, uh, P is a TA is indeed uh, the one half of sigma met tau, tau matrix that acts on U and D, okay? U and D. So therefore, it's two by two matrix, right? And this is two. Uh, um, uh, the vector with two entries. So therefore, C, TA acts on U. These two vectors. However, this gamma five acts on the spinner indices. Of U and D e independently, you understand? So they act. So they has a, U has the one well, uh, the four component U one U two D three U four. It's a direct direct spin. Okay. This gamma five really acts on these four four spinner indices. Okay. So you have to be careful. This gamma how this gamma five and T A acts on the this uh, <coughs> field. So you have to be careful. So next time I'm going to talk about the uh, standard model, and the standard model is really complicated. So you have to be really, really careful which uh, indices these uh, matrix acts on. So, so this gamma phi acts on these spin indices, whereas this t t acts on these two two quarks, these two quarks, and so often. Um, so therefore, so here, um, <sighs> so you can easily check that the so this uh, this Lagrangian for this symmetry as follows. For instance, if you take so let's go. Um, so this Lagrangian is mapped to as follows. So phi bar, which takes the following form. So e to the minus i uh, sater a uh, t a uh, minus uh, gamma uh, gamma phi um, sater. T, I'm oh, sorry, Sayer P, sorry, this is Sayer P. And then uh, I, D slash, I, D slash, um, E to the I, Sayer A, no, so Sayer B, dot T, uh, plus, and gamma 5, um, Sayer, uh, Yeah, say um, T, um, yeah, and psi. 
And then uh, once you take, um, so the gamma 5 uh, commute to gamma. So let's see, gamma 5 is i gamma uh, 0 gamma 2. So gamma 1, gamma 2, uh, gamma 3, right? So therefore, uh, when you uh, take the um, gamma 5, is commute with d uh, slash undecommute. Is it true? Uh, let's see, is it true? The last time we did, right? I already forgot. Uh, sorry. Um, I think uh, this is true, yeah. So the, the undecommute. Yeah, so gamma 5 with gamma i is equal to minus gamma i. Uh, gamma 5. Okay. And the okay. So therefore, uh, this is okay. And they just bring that one into here. Uh, so therefore, d slash and the commute with gamma 5, you get a plus sign, but there's no other minus sign. If you bring this one into here, you get a plus sign here. Okay. And then, but there's a minus sign here. So therefore, they, they, just, they just cancel. Okay. So that's how it works. So that how, how you can see the symmetry. And then, so this this one can be just decomposed. The symmetry can be decomposed and follow TL is equal to 1 half 1 plus gamma 5 uh, T and TR is equal to 1 half 1 minus gamma 5 and T. Then it satisfies um, the following uh, computational relation. It's the ordinary uh, epsilon i j k t l k, and then uh, it's the same as here. T r i t r j is um, the familiar um, computational relation, but the t l i and the t r j is equal to t. Okay. Uh, uh, it's commute. They they commute. With left and right commute. Therefore, the symmetry is called SU to left times SU to right. Okay, um, that's how it works. So, so these two. So the, this is uh, is this is a computational relation for realgebra SU two. This is computational realgebra SU two. Uh, we call it SU two left, SU two right. So here, so the classical Lagrangian has the um, has the has the SU two left and SU two R. However. Um, Okay, SU2 and SU2 right. Um, however, in reality, this is actually indeed uh, only system. In reality, it only has um, SU2. So you have like original Lagrangian, classical Lagrangian has two copies of the um, SU2. However, in reality, what's, uh, what's really preserved at quantum level is the only, it's called diagonal part. Diagonal part of, diagonal part of. Of SU2R. Or in fact, uh, you, this part is broken. So this part is broken. So this part is broken. In fact, so then what's left is this iso, uh, it's called isospin symmetry. Isospin symmetry. What's left is only this part in the reality. Okay. Now for so there is a, a reality in QCD. Um, this uh, that, so the original Lagrangian is broken to the um, 
only one, two copy of SC2 is broken with only one copy of SC2. Therefore, there is some symmetry breaking occurs in reality. And what happened is that it's it's not proven yet. Uh, it's not proven, but in QCD, so uh, uh, u u bar u uh, in that IR and in the it's It is believed to be that it is, it's called co bilinear. So u bar and u, the expectation value of u bar u and d bar d uh, has the QCD scale of q. Uh, so because of dimensionalism, this is, has mass dimension three half, three half. Therefore, this has to have a mass dimension three. Therefore, it is an IR in QCD. So this bilinear has an expectation of a lot of q. And as I mentioned, that this is a, um, this bilinear pair is not invariant under this the harassment uh, gamma phi. So, yeah. Okay. So gamma five. So the uh, my two yes yes gamma five doesn't come in. So therefore, um, so what, we, what you can see is that the, so, so as I mentioned last time, so u bar is mapped to uh, u bar e to the i gamma phi, uh, sorry, psi, uh, psi bar, psi bar, um, theta a and t a, theta t a, right? So, and also psi is mapped to uh, e to the i gamma phi, theta, um, a, T, A, uh, T, uh, Psi. So therefore, if you consider Psi by Psi, it's invariant, uh, it's, no, it's no longer invariant under this transformation. So they, they do not count that, okay? The last time we saw, right? So therefore, once they, they take the vacuum equation body not to Q, it breaks this part of symmetry. Okay? So, so therefore, so therefore, symmetry, two copy of SU2 is broken with one copy of SU2. So therefore, this is, Spontaneous symmetry breaking by quantum effect. So this part is not proven yet. Okay. So this is the same as mass gap problem. So if you solve this problem by using patent or whatever, uh, you get the uh, uh, millennium prize, whatever you call it. Um, so that whole since the spontaneous symmetry breaking occurs, the mass is small uh, will appear. Now the Goldstone also will appear. Okay. So that's a Goldstone theorem. Will tell us, and in fact, so so, so what is the masses uh, number goes from boson for this symmetry, this symmetry breaking? Okay, so this number goes from boson is indeed is our pi. It's believed in pi. So pi m is the uh, pi uh, plus minus uh, pi zero. The last time I told you, right? Um, I already forgot the content of the. Uh, so pi pi plus is equal to uh, u d bar. Uh, pi minus is equal to d u bar. So these are Mason's. Um, and then pi zero is what? E pi zero is the last time I have written that I already forgot. So pi zero is oh yeah, square root two um u u bar. Minus d bar. Okay, so these are pions. Okay. So therefore, this pion has three. There are three pions, three bosons. Okay, these are uh, the quark and that's the quark who form the bosons. Okay, um, this uh, three pion is exactly the. This is g and h, right? And dimension. 
dimension g of h is equal to 3. Exactly equal to uh, the number of pi n. And in fact, as I mentioned last time, not last time, not last time, not, not last time, uh, two lectures ago. <coughs> So it is not the uh, nuclear, uh, so proton and the neutron is what, uh, UUD, and then um, neutron is UDD, and the mass, the mass is almost 1 GB, uh, one, the mass is what? So the mass is around 940, 940, and Um, 940 MeV, and the naive guess is that the solar up quark mass of, uh, sorry, so MP is around the same as MN is around the same as uh, 940 GV, uh, MeV, sorry, MeV. So the naive guess is MU is a uh, third of this one, right? Uh, one third of this one, which means around 300, right? 300. So therefore, again, naive guess, naive uh, guess of pi n, so point pi n, mass of pi n plus minus here. Is since this is, uh, naive guess is up quark is 300, around 300, and since, since they are made of, uh, made of the two, Quark and under quark, so now your case is around 600, right? I mean, but this is not the case. This is not the case. This is not the case. The real mass of pi n and zero is around um, uh, 140. And so it's much, much less, uh, okay, much less than the, the naive case of pi. So um, this pi n, um, the it's a it's a puzzle that the the why this pi is uh, the the mass of pi is lighter than the naive gas coming from the mass of the uh, proton and neutron. Okay. Um, so this can be answered by using the considering this um, pi as a number boson boson. Okay. Here, as I mentioned, there are two contradict uh, contradictions. Now, boson boson is massless, as I mentioned. So, therefore, if it is true, now uh, boson boson, this has to be massless. Okay. And here, pion, real mass of pion is 140 mV, which has a mass. Okay. It's not no longer massless. However, it's lighter than lighter than the, the naive guess of the um, um, the mass of pi. Okay. So this this can be answered as follows. So that this puzzle can be answered as follows. Um, in fact, so this is like Okay. Let, 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 let me move on a little bit. So if so if the this the spontaneous symmetry working. Okay. And the spontaneous symmetry breaking occurs, and this the current that corresponds to this symmetry is broken already at the quantum level. So this current that corresponds to this this symmetry is broken at the quantum level. So that the um the, so the e to the by the the theorem e to the i gamma phi theta a uh, t will give you the current uh, j mu phi. Um, 5a. So, so here we assume ta theta a. Okay. So this is the net current, but this one is broken already at quantum level. So therefore, this acts. So usually, if this is a symmetry, if this is a symmetry, the net current acts vacuum in C or always. If this is a really symmetry. And the current acts on zero is really 
the backing respects the symmetry. So therefore, this should be zero. However, at the quantum level, this is normal zero. Therefore, um, the backing extension matrix element of J mu five, uh, J mu five, A, that acts on pion, pion field of P, is no longer zero, and minus I P mu uh, F pi uh, delta A B equal minus I P of X. Um, so they here x. So usually the current axon backing is zero if this is a really symmetry. However, in this case, uh, the, the, this current is uh, quantum mechanical broken, no longer preserved, uh, conserved. It's not, no longer conserved current. So therefore, it acts non-trivial on backing. So therefore, this matrix element is no longer uh, no longer zero. So therefore, and it, it, you can just take by by using symmetry. You can just guess the form of like this, and then say pi is called it's called the pi decay constant. So this if pi will appear. So I'm going to do the pi thing to get to can. So the uh, pi with the zero. Uh, Charge can decay to two photons. Okay. This uh, this process occurs when this JMU is no longer conserved. And that's what I'm going to talk about. That's why it's called pion decay constant. And so therefore, uh, by using this um, this matrix uh, amplitude, um, amplitude one can just consider one can just get uh, obtain this one forty MeV. In reality, uh, U and D has a really small mass in reality. So therefore, um, let me erase. Do you, does anyone have questions? So in reality, uh, they have actually like mass parameter. Uh, so this plus, um, so matrix M, so the M, M side R and side. So where the, this M is the mass of um, up quark and down quark, so therefore we have M U by U plus M D. Uh, and in fact, it's quite amazing that the so that naive guess is u mass of u is three hundred, right? In fact, mu is 10, 10, 10 MAD or something. Uh, actually, two point two MAD is very small. Um, MD is four point seven MAD. It's quite small. It's very small, so that the massless approximation is really bad, indeed. So, so you can ignore, indeed, uh, the mass comparing the QCD scale, indeed. However, so why, why this, the, the, these three quarks combined together will give you such a big mass? It's because of a strong force. So the, the strong force grew on just um, Combine these three quarks as a uh, color singlet, and this the 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 the, the, this, the, the energy of gruel will give you almost all energy, all mass of the uh, this proton and neutron. So therefore, um, the most of the, uh, the 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 mass of the proton and neutron is due to gruel, not the, not the quarks. So therefore, the massless singlet is the is. Actually, very good approximation. However, uh, we, strictly speaking, they have a real uh, mass parameter. So therefore, this um, 
uh, JV5 in uh, classically. So if you add, as I mentioned many times, if you add master, this JMU5 is no longer symmetry even at the classical level. Okay. Therefore, um, so just write down this E3 pi gamma 5 center A dot T A. Okay. Can be just written. So this is, let's call this is the U of X. So U of X can be just written down by using so called it's using the um, pi and field, pi a, p a, f pi. So I can just write down like this way instead of uh, say a, because it's a goes on both uh, mode for this uh, breaking into j and five. So that will, and then so what you will get is that the um, under this sim uh, under this transformation under this transformation um, so the this transformation so you so what I mean is it, what I mean is u of x of psi under this transformation Lagrangian has the following um, um, change. Okay, so the, under this uh, transformation, under this transformation, Lagrangian has the uh, the the variation. Lagrange delta L it will give you this uh, this equation. So therefore, as you can see, see if there is a mass mass term, the this uh, current conservation no no longer zero, right? So if mass is zero, the right hand side is zero at classical level. But if if you include the mass term, there is no there, uh, this current is no longer conserved. That's what it means. Uh, then uh, one can just evaluate. Um, one can just evaluate the uh, matrix element of this one is equal to, uh, for instance, equal to. So let's take x equal zero. Let's take x equal zero. So therefore, this is uh, one. Okay, and this is equal to uh, zero. Um, I psi bar um, m uh, pi a p a f pi f pi gamma five psi pi on b of p right pi on b of p. Okay. Oh, sorry. And then sorry, I just. I just put the partial here and zero. So therefore, this is p squared. Okay, p squared. Okay, and then once you can evaluate, one can evaluate this uh, element trace of um, this element matrix element such that the uh, trace of um, M. T A and T B is equal to one half delta A B M U plus M B. So if you use uh, this computational relation, computational relation, since the pi B will give you give you tau B, uh, uh, T B, and this uh, uh, this uh, under computational relation will give you uh, and Com combined with tau b and taking trace will give you this one. So therefore, this is equal to at the end of the day. Uh, so this will give you um, um, mu some number mu plus mb divided by um, lambda q q c d divided by r f. So as I mentioned, this bilinear psi by psi, psi, by, uh, psi is around the lambda q q c. I use also to use this one. Um, then 
So this um, matrix element will give you um, will give you this. Um, so we'll give you so we'll combine this one and this one will give you this one. So now for so p square is uh, the mass mass of pi n. So now for the mass of pi n can be understood as m u plus m b divided by lambda q q c d divided by uh, f pi. So here. Uh, QCD scale is a dimension last time, a uh, long time ago, MMB, roughly, or 200 or something. And this one is indeed 19 MMB. And this one has the written over there. And if you use this relation, you can just approximately uh, give you, um, this will give you the uh, good approximation for one. For pi on. So therefore, really pi on can be understood as the, the uh, non stoke boson of chiral symmetry breaking. So the, as I mentioned, so this SU2, SU2 left, SU2 right is broken to SU2 isospin. Isospin is really, you just have a psi u and d is really sharpened by SU2, SU2, this SU2 isosceme. So just this two copy of SU2 is broken to the one copy of SU2 is called chiral symmetry breaking. Chiral symmetry breaking. And the, the Nabu-Dosan boson for chiral symmetry breaking is pi. Okay. And it, Nabu boson, boson is the um, massless. However, if you include the uh, the so-called small mass for quarks, so the pi -on becomes so-called suit pi. -on. If you include the mass of the quark, the, it's not this um, uh, this symmetry is already already broken. So therefore. It becomes uh, the it's called the pion pion or sued uh, non Gorson boson. So this uh, symmetry involving gamma five is weakly broken by small mass of a Therefore, in classical level, the current is no longer conserved, but uh, almost conserved. So therefore, the, the cost, uh, so if the n u and n d are zero, the pi is zero, right? However, uh, because of the small mass of the core, it does see the QCD scale level. Therefore, it's 140 n. In, instead of the instead of non EPS. That's the cost of uh, consequence of current symmetry breaking. So physicists often ask you what is the mass of pi? You just said mass is a number number goes on both on it's zero if you assume the quark is massless. If you if you don't assume the quark is massless, it becomes sued number goes on both on. So therefore it acquires some mass by looking at the QCD scale. Okay. It, the feeling in the QCD scale. Any questions so far? Oh yeah, there's a question. How do we know mass of U and D course? Ah good question. Um okay so the, as I mentioned last time so if you QCD if you go to high energy it becomes like a free theory. So it's a simple equation. So if you just do the measurement at the high energy, at the high energy, one can just see that the it has a uh, the so um, yeah. So u bar and u sorry u bar x uh, u y 
is uh, you can just take the p square minus whatever um, m u square plus half extreme r, and then of course uh, d p two pi to the fourth fourth e to the two pi p x minus y. So if 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 you go to the high energy, so you can just look at consider as a free uh, free theory, so that you can just look at the property of the or 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 you can just consider the tree level amplitude for QCD at the high energy, high energy, so that you can just measure them at the, the, the work class. Oh, that, that that's written in the in the Pascal and Schroeder's chapter seventeen. The part of modern song. Those are by using that one, you can just using measure the whole thing by using uh, some type of freedom. Any other questions? So this is a chance question. Okay. Uh, shall we take up? I think uh, it's a good time to take a break. So, so I, we talk about the uh, Mount Gorson bosons, Nambu Gorson boson, and then Karasimic breaking. And then in the second half of lecture, I'm going to talk about um, yeah this pi zero to two gamma and the I mean a uh, heat model. Okay, let's take a break. 10 minutes break.
Okay. Um, okay. Um, let's get started. So the in the first lecture, uh, first half of the lecture, so I talk about the if you have a continuous symmetry uh, at the original Lagrangian, and then once the um, theory picked the vacuum, uh, the symmetry is broken, some symmetry is broken, and then so the broken part is the g of h. This is the broken part, and then number of uh, masses, uh, the masses both uh, both of will appear after symmetry breaking, the number is in just dimension g of h. And, it, and in QCD, um, so we can almost neglect, we can almost neglect uh, up and down quark mass, so that the, um, the original Lagrange almost has a symmetry, SU2 left and SU2 right, but um, the theory picks this, uh, the vacuum exception value, so this vacuum exception value uh, at the, at the, as a vacuum, so that the, the quark bilinear has a, a proportion to lambda QCD scale to Q, so therefore it breaks the um, SU2 left, SU2 right symmetry to, to diagonal form, which is called isolated spin symmetry. Um, and the cost of this symmetry breaking is the massless pions. However, um, in reality, there's a small uh, mass for uh, up quark and down quark, and somehow these pions see the uh, small mass uh, of quarks, so that the, um, the, the, the mass of it is found. And then this predicts the uh, pi of mass very well. Um, so that the, if, the, if you assume, of course, the quark mass is zero, it's pi on zero. Uh, pi on mass is zero. So the main message of the first lecture is the if you do the current, uh, first uh, symmetry break and the masses goes from, uh, masses, uh, non goes from boson, and then uh, pi on is the, uh, the number. Now we go some bottom for current breaking for QC. So that's the main message. Um, and then, um, okay, so then I already give almost answer to the problem too. Uh, and then, so this is right. To the pro last problem of the last problem of the <sighs> last problem of problem one. The next topic is related to last problem of problem one. So, so as I mentioned last uh, last time of the anomaly, so the um, so the current of J five um, has the uh, the following the uh, e square sixteen pi uh, square. Um, it's from the alpha bear. <sighs> if we knew the alpha bear, that's the, uh, the anomaly we saw last time. So now as I assume the pi mass is uh, zero. Um, so that the uh, so now this is really a novel of the um, and if you include 
B of so here now I assume I just consider the the following process. Um, here uh, we assume that the the so here it's a pi m pi zero and the photon gamma gamma. So the pi m can decay. Anomaly will tell you that the pi m can decay to gamma as follows. Um, so here, as I mentioned, pi m is the it is really is created by J V five of zero a is equal to zero. So the um, e to the i gamma five zero a and t a okay, t a uh, t and a okay. and then uh, pi plus minus is really come from uh, combination of t one plus minus i t two. And pi zero is really come from T3 component. Uh, from the T is a SU2 matrix here. Okay. SU2 the algebra. Okay. Uh, so therefore, um, here um, pi on zero is really really related to A goes three. Sorry, A goes three. A goes three. A goes three. Um, then uh, here. Uh, the pi on can uh, this really acts on up and down fork, right? Up and down fork. Okay, and so therefore this uh, the current is really coupled to the uh, this uh, triangle loop is due to U and D quarks. Okay, quarks, and the quark has the the charge. Uh, U has a charge one uh, charge of. U is the two third, so it's a fractional charge. And Q of D is uh, minus one third, okay. minus one third. Okay. Therefore, it can couple to so the quark can couple to the electromagnetic uh, field, so that the photon will be can be. Okay. This is a problem that we are looking at. So therefore, the last time, so what we when we are looking at the the, the, the Navier model for the JMU. Um, five uh, uh, current anomaly. So what you will get is trace of T A and T B and T C um, and then F J. Essentially F B uh, mu mu F alpha beta uh, C is mu mu uh, alpha beta. Um, here. Um, the the F is electromagnetic field, okay? So, that, so therefore it's U1. However, here it has SU2 um, that actually rotates U and D. Okay, so isospin, isospin um, it's not isospin, it's a, it's, it's, it's a gamma 5, it goes a, a gamma 5 involved, so it's not isospin, but uh, another SU2, okay? So it's on my diagonal of SU2 left and SU2 right, it's precisely speaking. Therefore, this becomes trace of um, QA, uh, Q square, um, and then um, sigma 3. T3, T3, sorry, T3. T3 is really, the pi is, uh, is pi 0 is T3, and where is plus minus is really T1 plus minus I times T2. Um, so therefore, this Q is a tr uh, charge uh, matrix. Q is uh, 2 third minus 1 third. Okay. So anomaly is this one. Okay. So the. Um, so therefore, um, so now I'm playing for uh, this triangle diagram. Okay. This triangle diagram is the just so right hand side is almost computed here, um, almost computed here. But uh, we need to evaluate this one. So the here uh, q square is equal to uh, two third square. And minus one third uh, square, 
here. And also T3 is indeed, uh, I think, about current minus one half, zero, zero. Okay? Because it's a poly polymetric times one half. Okay? And also, um, if you just multiply to them together, what's going to happen is what? Uh, one half, uh, two third uh, square minus one third square, which is what? This is four minus one is equal to three. So that one half um, be a line of doing correctly. Uh, be, I think, okay. Um, one half, yeah, one half, and then one third. But here, we also need to include the number of colors. So U is SU2, uh, S, U has the um, um, carbon to SU3 gauge group, right, as a strong force. So for U1, U2, U3. And people just call red, uh, blue, blue, and then uh, I already forgot, uh, green. So this is called uh, the color, the number of color, NC. NC is equal to 3 in QCD. Well, well, this will give you, uh, here, you have to consider how many core uh, it's running. So now for, uh, you have to think about the, um, am I doing correct thing? I think I am doing correct thing. Uh, so therefore, number of cork is three. Uh, actually, even up cork you have a three colors. So the, you have to multiply here. When you take a trace, all the cork. So therefore, you have to multiply and see. And see. Therefore, this will multiply. Okay. So therefore, this will give you the. Uh, this will give you. Um, so this will give you that the. In the case of the. Uh, 32 pi square is from the alpha layer and the alpha layer. So this will give you, uh, in the case of the um, the parasymmetric breaking for an only for parasymmetric breaking, um, the um, coefficient is really different. Okay. Um, so, and here uh, we can just take a look at, I mean, almost the answer is written in the uh, past can share that you have to do uh, the calculation by yourself, that the, um, so, um, so that the, so if you consider the matrix element so, uh, such that the, um, Pi and um, sorry, so P uh, mu and then um, P mu uh, K lambda acts on J in five uh, A equals three and the pi n of zero. If you look at the, this matrix element. We can just con conclude that the, I mean, most of, most of them are written in Kesken and Schroeder in 19.3. So you can just take a look at the, the symmetry. Uh, uh, I already raised the, uh, I already raised the matrix amplitude. Uh, yeah. So you can just take a look, use the relation for this uh, 0, j mu 5. A pi B is equal to minus I P um, F pi dot A B uh, e to the minus I P dot X. So by using this one, uh, one can just uh, take a look, um, the, this matrix element has the following uh, values the Q mu I Q mu 
So here I'm going to assume this is Q. Q and here P and P and mu and here K and long. So P and mu are the, the um, uh, sorry, P and K are momentum, Q are momentum. So now uh, Q is equal to P plus K. And mu and lambda are polarization. Okay, so then, so this matrix element, I can just compute by using this one, uh, one minus Q, one over Q square, some quotient, epsilon, mu, uh, uh, mu, alpha there, uh, P, uh, alpha, uh, K there. And since the, if you just construct, uh, contract the, the partial mu, like, like this, if you take uh, the, the, how do you say, the divergent of J mu, so this will give you just, uh, if you consider partial mu, this will give you Q square. Okay, this cancel with this one. Therefore, if you compare both uh, this result and that, that, that result, and what you will get is A. So this A is some coefficient. So this, this can be just, just a numerical factor. This A can be determined as follows. Um, as follows. Um, so 13, 2, minus uh, B square, 1. And this uh, A is really a pretty important role to compute the, the the uh, the decay rate of gamma uh, pi zero to two gamma. Okay. So therefore, uh, so by using this result, I think I may be wrong about the one half factor. Let, let, let me check now. I in the I may did computational mistake. I don't know. Uh, let me check. E, yeah, I did some computational mistake. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, why is okay? So here, actually, minus sign is missing. Sorry, minus sign is missing. And then uh, I think I have missing factor of eight. Factor of eight in the computation. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I think. Uh, I did some make a mistake about the computational mistake. Okay. Um, I need to check where did I make a mistake. Um, it, it should be four pi. Uh, four pi. Four by square. Four by square. Uh, I don't know where I made a mistake. Uh, uh, Hundred eight. Oh, sorry. I understand now what's what's going on. Sorry. Um, here, when you compare uh, this one and this one, you always get the factor of uh, eight. Uh, factor of eight from Q. Uh, from Q. So F mu is partial mu and mu and mu. Uh, minus partial uh, new and new um, and then this will get the factor of 2 and this will get the factor of 2 and then uh, the another factor will come from the, the diagram so another factor comes from diagram too so that, for example you get the factor of 8 you get the 4 so the 8 divided by 32 you get the 1 over 4 so, so that the, uh, yeah, now I understand. So you get the uh, factor of four, of 4 here. Okay. And by using this one, one can just compute uh, the decay rate of this gamma, uh, which is the homework, the, the last problem of homework. Okay, so that's the, um, so that's the, the homework. Um, so that's the, the end of the pi zero to two gamma, and that, the reason why this pi, if if pi is called pi on decay constant, is really the it's responsible for pi zero to two gamma. 
OK, let's see how the anomaly is related to, anomaly is related to the, um, the pi zero to 2 gamma. So therefore, so this uh, the current, for anomaly current is really the, um, um, if you apply this anomaly current to the, uh, this, this current symmetry breaking uh, case, then you can just obtain the um, compute the decay rate of decay rate of pi zero to two gamma. So these are the uh, kind of symmetry breaking for uh, symmetry breaking for global symmetry. Now we are going to apply for the um, uh, the symmetry breaking for local symmetry. Or, or like a, so the, we just look at the uh, for instance in the beginning. So we just look at the OM one, like which just. Uh, has a global symmetry and the real scalar. So we now just couple this the the scalar field to the uh, to the gauge field. So first, let's look at the um, abelian the Higgs mechanism. Okay. Um, so now. So the last time, uh, so the, in the first part is global, global symmetry. Uh, G is broken to uh, subgroup uh, H. That's that that is uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking. Once the vacuum takes the sum vacuum and gets value. Okay. Now here it becomes local, 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 or okay, gauge symmetry. Or okay, symmetry. Uh, symmetry uh, G is broken to H. So in, in standard model, so, so the next time I talk about, I'm not, I'm not sure the next time, oh, maybe the end. So this uh, is to U1 that I will work. So uh, SU2 weak force and U1 uh, hyper. Uh, gauge field is sort of hyper. I will explain what 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 this y and it means uh, next time. It's broken to u one electro uh, electro electromagnetic field. That's really what's going to happen in standard model. Um, after uh, this uh, the breaking, in fact, this goes on boson. So the people just often call boson. Uh, number okay. Number goes on mode are eaten by uh, gauge field. So the um, uh, gauge field. becomes massive. Uh, massive. So therefore, um, in the in the in the gauge field, so if you do the polarization vector, right? Polarization vector uh, e mu k. So that the if you take k is equal to one zero zero one. Okay, it's one zero zero one. The EMU case only the physical degrees of freedom is only uh, 0, 1, 0, 0. It's transposable, transposable 0, 1, 0. Okay. Um, so these are physical degrees of uh, freedom is this transposable polarization, transversal polarization. Uh, Polarization. 
polarization, uh, transverse polarization. So in the case of massless case, so as I mentioned uh, many times, so there is a epsilon uh, goes to uh, epsilon plus k is really, uh, I mean, BRC exact. Uh, and also, uh, by using Gupta Lula condition, you can just erase this one. And also, if you just look at the gauge, uh, gauge, this one, this gauge, will give you uh, e dot k has to be zero, right? So therefore, these two conditions will give you one zero zero one polarization vector is unphysical. And also, this condition will give you one zero zero minus one. This is unphysical, right? Um, physical, or because uh, gauge that way. So they, they, you just import this is equal to zero. Okay. Um, so now for these two uh, condition um, polarization vector are, 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 are killed by 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 gauge fixing and also this uh, quantization condition. However, if the gauge field is massive, become massive, one can just take the uh, longitudinal uh, longitudinal pol polarization. Therefore, this Nambu Gaussian mode is transformed into the um, uh, third uh, longitudinal. Uh, so, Nambu Gaussian mode is transformed into the longitudinal longitudinal polarization. The, Degrees of freedom uh, of massive uh, gauge field. So that's what's going to happen. So this this mechanism is called Higgs field. Uh, Higgs mechanism. So, so if you consider the, the log of symmetry is broken, or gauge symmetry broken g to h, then a uh, gauge field acquire mass instead of the num, num, instead of the num, uh, nums Gaussian masses boson appear, um, this degree of freedom is actually eaten by gauge field and it becomes massive. So if you eat something, you becomes you, you become fat, right? Like me. Um, <laughs> So then, so once gauge field eat the Nambu-Gosson boson, even though it's Nambu-Gosson boson is massive, uh, massive it's, it has degrees of freedom, physical degrees of freedom. So this degree of freedom it become, uh, gets the gauge field of fat, uh, becoming really massive. But the long, there's another degree of freedom appear for longitudinal case. Okay? That's called the Higgs mechanism. Uh, okay, um, that's what I'm going to explain from now. So, um, so that's that's what Higgs mechanism, and then Higgs mechanism. Uh, so first, let's consider a billion, a billion. Mechanism. So let's consider a billion. So let's consider the following case. Like I have the following. Of course, so we, we look at many times of this one. The phi and star and phi minus phi star and phi. Uh, where the um, again v uh, phi star and phi is equal to uh, uh, g over half of phi star phi minus uh, one half the square. Um, so again, now phi is complex phi is a complex scalar. So therefore, uh, there's a human gauge symmetry such that the um, a mu is map to a mu minus i is e uh, partial mu 
chi uh, phi is up to e to the i chi of x. So it's logo. Logo means that the um, so this u1 case uh, u1 symmetry is depends on position. It becomes local instead of global. The last time OM, when you say OM symmetry, phi one dot dot phi n is mapped to this one o, uh, OM matrix times this matrix. And this OM is independent of which it becomes good local. Here now it's local. That's what it means local. Um, Okay, um, so it's a it's it is, it's a U1 gauge U1 gauge symmetry U1 gauge symmetry. Okay, um, we have time. Okay, now. Um, so we have the similar potential, super, uh, uh, not super potential, similar potential. Um, here, and so vacuum just can take uh, phi zero. Uh, for instance, phi zero star phi zero zero to one half t square. So the vacuum take the uh, this one it, that breaks breaks neutral symmetry. Your own symmetry. So the the idea of Higgs mechanism is your gate symmetry. In fact, it, it breaks your gate symmetry, uh, as we will see uh, from now. So um, okay. Um, so the the idea is just the ghost of Mosso into into some, some particular parameterization. So, for instance, phi of x. So the vacuum just can take square root 2 um, b. So, so here uh, is vacuum extension matter. Phi, phi 0 can be just taken 1 over one, one square root 2 b. So this is a vacuum extension matter can take. And if you. And Higgs of h. So let, let's call h. h means Higgs. And e to the i theta of x of b. So um, here, um, as I mentioned, so the, in the in the in the um, OL model, so this becomes massive, and then theta is really goes on really. Um, um, let me see, just write down. I'm not good at the uh, drawing, and then the mix can happen. Right? So that's what's going to happen already. In the and it, so now phi of x take the uh, here phi of x here is here take uh, phi zero is really one over square root uh, square root of b here okay and then h direction is really this direction h direction is this direction and then the center direction is really this vacuum direction okay center direction so this is really U1 symmetry, right? So this U1 symmetry chi of x is really uh, the same as set of x here. So this is really transit U1, U1 direction. Okay. Um, so so it's a go from uh, mode. However, um, so now uh, h and set are already real parameter. So now, so we just define the n mu. N mu is in a really gauge field, is as follows. Um, it's B mu plus one over um, E uh, partial mu uh, theta. So we introduce so called the field B, uh, which is the is in field B, uh, which is A mu minus. 1 over e times partial mu theta over b. So essentially, this is, I mean, I mean, I can just rewrite this one as follows: uh, b mu a mu minus this. So if I just 
So then um, we can just take the these the following um, the following of so if you take and define like this way, so d me phi, which is partial mu plus i e a mu, i e a mu adds on phi, can take uh, and it applies both into here, what you can write down as follows. So this this is the really homework you need to do. Uh, this is the really homework. Uh, square root two e to the i theta uh, over b. Um, partial mu h plus i e b mu um, um, b plus h. Okay, so this is the uh, um, the covariant derivative. Um, covariant derivative acts on phi. Then um, you can just um, plug back into this this potential. So here, what I did as follows. Here we assume. Um, So as you can easily see that the um, so this chi, this chi, this chi is corresponds to this theta, right? And so therefore, and also this a q, this is really gauge transformation. The partial mu theta is really you can just just substitute chi as the um, theta over b. Then uh, really th this chi, this gauge transformation is really this. One. And then um, every gauge transformation is really replaced by this, this, this one. Okay. Therefore, by by choosing gauge phi, phi of x. The, so this is called unitary gauge. Phi of x. So this is called unitary gauge. I will tell you why this is called unitary gauge. Um, phi of x. You can just choose a gauge such that the phi of h is square root two. Um, B plus F, uh, H of X. Is there any question so far? No. Uh, just, just tell me if you have a question. And then um, A mu just can be replaced B mu. So this is unitary gauge. So by, by using um, gauge transformation, by using uh, by using um, gauge transformation. Um, theta b goes to theta b minus chi. So one can fix the um, phi and a mu as, uh, as it is, like this way. Okay, okay. Um, so this is the, the main idea of how to, uh, how to get rid of this degrees of freedom of set. Okay. Then, Anyway, so irrespective of this gauge transformation, just plug this one into here, into here. Then, um, so this Lagrangian, so this is the homework I just added yesterday. I'm very sorry, but it's better to, uh, it's better, you, have, you have to do more homework, but uh, I'm very sorry, but it's better to do this, 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 this calculation. That's why I just added. So now is equal to minus one force, S square, um, S square means F mu, F mu, 
plus one half uh, e square b plus h square uh, b. Mm -hmm. So just just plug this one, this one into here, into here, and plug one. Into. And then this this center will disappear. Um, plus one half partial e h partial e h minus one over h. So you just do like this calculation. That's it. It's not that difficult. Okay, so plug this one into here. Um, so just just do the do the all the calculation uh, written here, and you get uh, read it here. And what's interesting is that this one doesn't have the cross term. That uh, uh, no cross term. Uh, Find me H B. And also, uh, B mean becomes massive because of this term. So, because of this term. So, E square B times B mean B mean, right? So, therefore, um, so you can just get rid of, uh, so you can just have the master of this, if you, if you ignore H, so. You, this term is really mass term of uh, the, the B, which is the kind of mass gauge field. Okay, and then um, H is also H, Higgs field uh, is, this is for Higgs field. With a mass parameter. And h square is equal to gb square. Um, the mass really come from here. Okay. Uh, so uh, I mean this term, this square. So this Lagrangian can be written. So the, the what we have done is that the by by by, by writing. B mu as following, by using just shifting like a ga 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 like a gauge transformation, shifting a mu by 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 gauge transformation partial mu theta, everything can be written. So you can just get rid of the degree of freedom theta. This this is as I mentioned non non Boltzmann uh, Boltzmann okay. However, uh, but just introducing B mu, one can just write down. Everything Lagrangian without this say. Okay. So that the, you can just uh, look at that uh, by using this simple gauge transformation. Theta goes to I mean, theta over b goes to theta over b minus chi. You just get rid of the degrees of freedom of theta. So that the phi is really real value with Higgs field, and a can be replaced p, and Lagrangian like this becomes like this. So therefore, instead of writing uh, Theta, you just look at uh, the you, you have mass of the uh, the gauge field. This is really uh, uh, the this is the uh, the Higgs mechanism. Um, in the past, can show that introduce Higgs mechanism a bit different way. But uh, I think this is the most uh, straightforward way to see um, Higgs mechanism. Um, yeah. Okay, so even though here you have a two degrees of an agent say. But if it is local, it, you just perform like a gauge transformation so that the, uh, everything can be written in terms of gauge field and Higgs field. But instead of the, the degrees of freedom the theta has turns into the, the mass of the gauge field. Okay.
So that's the heat mechanism. Huh? And let's hope I'm more question. Um, so the reason why this um, this is called unit of gauge that they really this will give you the uh, physical degrees of freedom. For instance, from uh, from this Lagrangian functions read off the final rule. For instance, um, the gauge field heat field is equal to two i e squared g mu nu. Um, okay. And then uh, so this can be. And D is what? Uh, e square, E square. Oh, sorry. E times D. And D, um, G, um, and also, so this, of course, uh, this line is Higgs field. And this is uh, the, the wavy lines of the gauge field D. Okay. Um, and also we have the uh, three-point vertex, which is minus b and uh, and h. So by using this Lagrangian, one can just read off the final row, and then h and b are really physical degrees of freedom. Um, Okay, so that's the reason why it's called unitary gauge. You know, what about the propagator? So the propagator uh, is that you can just read off the Lagrangian. So Lagrangian is essentially uh, so B mu, uh, G mu mu, partial square, um, and minus partial mu, partial mu. And here, now, what we have is the another um, uh, parameter, some called MB, so MB square, uh, G mu mu. Uh, sorry, I think it's uh, is the sign the same. Uh, I think the sign is is it, is it true? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, the relevant part for the um, for the uh, for the the kinetic term. So this is a kinetic term for the H field, and there's a, in addition you have a mass term because of this one, because of here. Okay. So therefore, from here, you can just take the Fourier transformation of the, you have a GV nu, uh, k square, um, minus plus uh, k nu, uh, k nu, and then, uh, am I doing something stupid? Yeah, plus uh, n square b, GV nu. Um, since the, the property, the, the green function, that the this uh, this d mu uh, nu d mu nu uh, of the okay d mu nu that acts on the propagator. Uh, sorry, uh, what I'm writing. Okay, sorry. Uh, um, let, 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 let's let, let's call this one is delta delta mu nu. Let's define this one delta delta mu nu. And the final propagator for for, for gauge field is mu rho. And what we we'll get is this i uh, mu rho uh, delta four um, and then zero. Right? So this is what we want to obtain. Or maybe you have you could have x minus y. You have x minus y. Okay. Um, so.
So that's the propagator. So, so what you need to do is really essentially take an inverse of this one. Inverse of this one. Uh, then you will get is that this propagator D uh, uh, new uh, k square for gauge field is minus i uh, g mu new. Uh, this is the exercise. You just take the how to take the, the inverse of this one. Uh, 1 over uh, k square. So this is the uh, in the unitary gauge. So the in unitary gauge. Unitary gauge is this. Unitary gauge in, in other words, uh, phi of um, in other words, phi of x has to be real. So phi of x, so that you can just get rid of the degrees of freedom say it here, say it here. So by using this, this gauge transformation, phi of x is real. That's called unitary gauge. Unitary gauge, um, the propagator of the massive gauge field is this one. So this is the exercise you have to do. Um, but but essentially just taking trace or uh, not trace. I'm sorry. The last time I keep mentioning transpose, uh, trace for transpose, and this is the inverse. In taking inverse, we get this one. Um, yeah. Uh, let, let, let me. I think my signs right. Let, let, let me check. I think my signs right. But let me check. Um, yeah, I think my sign is correct. Yeah. Okay, so let's take the inverse of this one. So essentially what you need to do is just multiply this one and this one, you get that one. That, that's it. That's it. Um, okay, so let's see. The problem of unitary gauge is not, it's, it's renormalizability is not manifest. Um, here, for instance, once you take k goes to infinity, uh, the strength phenomena will occur. Um, so this k goes to infinity limit, this, this k is quadratic, this k is quadratic. So they, they cancel each other when you, when you take k goes to infinity. Then what's left is only this one. Therefore, um, so what's left is only this one. So therefore what you will get is the i over m d squared. It's very strange. Uh, when you take k goes to infinity limit of the propagator, so uh, the propagator is 1 over n squared. So it's very strange, right? So then if you look at the scalar propagator of um, phi 1, and if you go to momentum space, you have p squared plus n squared plus i epsilon over i. And you, of course, when you take um, uh, p, Okay, let's go. Okay, k scales, k scales to infinity, it becomes zero, right? But here it goes one over m d squared. So therefore, it looks like it violates renormalizability. But one can take a different case for such features called RC gauge. Uh, this one is written in the uh, Pascal and Schroeder chapter. 21. Um, should I explain it to you? Uh, I think uh, I can I can I can explain it to you. Okay, so let's explain it to you. So this this one is the, the uh, some so the merit of the uh, merit of intergauge is that the if you take this the phi is real and then you shift m to be mu, uh, it's easy to see that Lagrangian has the mass, uh, uh, the, from Lagrangian the gauge field is massive. And also physical degrees, you can easily see the final row form. But here, the problem is the, the, the cost is, the, the, mer the merit or cost for inter gauge is just that problem is behave very strangely when you go to k, uh, high energy limit. Uh, but this is just the, uh, the problem gauge and one can take another gauge so that the renormalizability is uh, assured. 
So let me do the, the I think let me explain. I think uh, here I only talk about an abelian model uh, and then non-abelian Higgs mechanism. I think uh, I also plan to explain a little bit, but it's okay. I think the non-abelian case is uh, will appear in the in the standard model. So Um, they have questions. So 20 minutes uh, left, and I will take talk about um, alternative procedure. Um, alternative. Okay. Um, So the, if you take phi of x is 1 over square 2, this is the, what the um, uh, person should use in the, in the 20.1. Uh, so, so we assume that uh, it's, it's no longer real. Okay? The phi of x is no longer real, it has imaginary form. Then uh, d mu phi star, uh, d mu phi star phi can be written as follows: one half partial mu phi square uh, by one square plus one half partial mu by two square and plus one half d square d square then mu then mu. It's a mass term, and then plus e v and u by u by two. So it's a cross. There's a cross term up here. Um, the cost is cross term up here. Okay, and then minus e and u uh, by two which is um, by one minus by one. Uh, mu phi 2 plus um, e square b um, um, phi 1 and mu uh, and mu and then plus 1 half and mu and mu um, So here, uh, phi two indeed. If you use this uh, procedure, phi two of x look like looks like uh, uh, propagating uh, uh, degrees of freedom. Um, But but the problem is this term. Problem is this term. So it, it makes this uh, problem is it makes this problem. It makes this um, it makes this uh, with it mixes with the um, so and mu. Okay. Um, the it makes an mu by 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 this term. 
So the, um, for instance, if you look at the Pascal shredder, uh, they, they follow this ball. Uh, for instance, if you look at Pascal engine 20.1, uh, so this term will create the following propagator. So they is create this one, and then so so the a mu turns into phi mu uh, phi two, and then becomes the a mu. So this will give you a contribution to the uh, propagator that will give rise to some mass term, and so on. That's how the best can show that I uh, introduced the. Um, the mass of the the, uh, the gauge field and so on, but uh, I mean you can just take a look at twenty point one of the test and shoot if you want. But here, uh, instead of uh, doing that, I just want to uh, how to say, um, remove this uh, mixing time by just fixing gauge. To fixing gauge. To do that, uh, the, the, we just recall that the uh, the partition function in the pass integral of something like a dA, uh, dC, uh, dC bar, and d phi, and so on, um, for, gauge field, for gauge field. So what we look at in the, in the what we learn in uh form of method is minus one to C, and then omega square, um, plus C bar and uh, um, D phi four of, of C. And this omega is the, um, so omega of A is gauge fixing, um, fixing functions. Okay. Um, to get rid of this uh, mixing term, one can choose, cleverly choose the omega of A such that the, you can just uh, get rid of this mixing term. That's the uh, idea of this R, it's called RC gauge in gauge. I think that's the most important part in uh, 21, uh, chapter 21 in Pesky and Shredder. I mean, I don't read Pesky and Shredder 21 very well, but uh, this is the most important part. Um, for instance, this 1 over uh, 2 C uh, omega square can take minus 1 to C um, partial mu A mu minus C um, uh, MA. MA is uh, here, MA is, as you can easily see, MA. Mass of pH field is EB. So, MA. Um, phi square. So phi two square. Okay. One can take the following um, um, gauge. Then after um, after gauge including this term. So the, after including this term, you can just easily see that the, if you take the product of this one, uh, what you will get is the partial mu. Uh, and mu, and then phi two, right? Phi two, and then also you have c cancel, two c cancel, and then you have a minus sign cancel, right? So you have a plus of this one, okay? And if I integrate the parts, you get a minus sign, and so any any okay? So if I integrate the parts, you get a minus sign that cancel of this one. So now for after gauge fixing uh, Lagrangian, uh, Lagrangian after gauge fixing, after gauge fixing, uh, Lagrangian Taylor and fixing, what you will get is one half, and here uh, you can easily see that the you cannot uh, see the mass of phi one, but however. Um, after doing, um, oh, am I doing? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. The mass of mass term of phi one really come from uh, b of phi. Sorry, b of uh, phi star. Oh. So uh, I didn't include b of phi uh, potential here. It's just a only generic term. So after including the um, 
um, pressure mu by one square and minus one half and x square, uh, sorry, by one square uh, by and one, one square. This can't really come from uh, potential bound by stop by. And then you have one half pressure mu by the square. And then uh, minus c over 2 and a square uh, phi 2 square minus 1 half a mu uh, minus uh, g mu nu. Okay, uh, I think uh, I hope I can write down everything. g mu nu, or just, oh, I cannot write down everything. Um, minus one half a mu minus a mu mu minus square plus one minus one of c uh, pressure mu pressure mu minus a a square g mu mu um a mu. So this we got Lagrangian. Um, so then. Now we have some one of C, right? As we saw many times in the other lecture for gauge field. One of C and the mean term is disappear, will disappear. Therefore one can just take the um, take the um, again the same procedure, go to the momentum space and take the inverse of this one. One can read off the propagator. So that the d um, d mu nu of k square z to the minus i um, g mu nu minus one minus c uh, k nu k nu k square minus c and a square um, one over k square minus n n square plus i plus one. Okay, so then, so this is the just take go to the momentum space and this inverse of it. Then you get this one. Um, and also, you have the degree looks like a phi two becomes the degree of freedom. Um, the phi two uh, the propagator um, of of phi 2 of k is minus i k square minus c uh, and square plus i is minus 1. And then, so here, um, here this mass depends on c, right? This mass depends on C is really signal for phi 2 is un, unphysical. Because I mean mass of the mass of the sun field depends on gauge is really I mean C is really uh, the the pre-parameter to fix a gauge. Okay? But uh, you can so sort of really change the C. So therefore this means that the uh, the signal phi 2 is unphysical. You know that the phi two is unphysical, and whereas this uh, propagator mass time is really comes here, in the end. and when you take k goes to infinity, so when you take uh, so um, let me erase this part. So when you take uh, c is finite. C is finite. Okay, C is finite. Then k goes to infinity is discounted with this one, right? And what's left is only the what's important is this part is this one. Therefore, um, um, k finite d mu nu uh, d mu nu uh, k square is really uh, one over uh, k square in the um, 
in the in the so-called arc seepage. Arc seepage. And then from here, uh, renormalizability, renormalizability. Is manifest. Okay, and instead, when you, you can take C goes to infinity, you get the restore unitary gauge. So the, when you take C goes to infinity, it's really a huge mass. Okay, so there, there is no propagate providing degree of freedom. So you can just, it's called um, integrate, uh, okay. Integrate out or uh, or it becomes like a, it becomes super massive. So they, they decouple from theory. So therefore, and if you look at the, the C of the infinite limit, this one C cancel with this C. So therefore, uh, minus one sine countdown, and you, you have a minus sign here. Uh, so therefore, what's left is the, the one I have written in the middle. Uh, so you have C and C uh, countouts, but you can just ignore this term, and MA only left. Okay? And if you compare with the, the one I have written down for um, the propagator for, written down for inter gauge, you can just see that the it's really the C of the infinite limit. Okay. Um, here, usually gauge uh, the um, renormalizability is not manifest, but um, so this phi two is really decoupled, and you can just only see the physical degrees of freedom. And I just want to mention that the um, if you take C is finite, C is finite, this goes field. Um, this goes still, C also receives the same mass, MA. Um, and and it, it counts out with the, as, as I mentioned, the uh, time like polarization of the gauge field A. So that's really, uh, you know, the way, so if you use this uh, RC gauge, you can restore the. Um, you can see renormalizability. That's written in the Test Constraint 20, 21, Chapter 21. Okay, so that's the um, um, Abhi, the story of Abelian Higgs mechanism. Uh, Abelian Higgs mechanism. Um, yeah, so in particular, uh, Pest Control, if you look at Pest Control 20.1, so this is the end of the lecture, but if you look at the uh, Pest Control, um, for instance, uh, oh my goodness, I have, oh, okay, the relevant part is written here. So relevant part is written here. Um, So um, if you look at the Pascal Schirm 20.1, here, um, gauge field, so you just consider gauge field. Um, so here you have the the massive I M square A G mu plus um, M A K mu um, I over K square minus M A K mu. So the first term. The first term, uh, first property is really come from here. So it's a mass term of the gauge field. 
sum for. So the first diagram just sum for the mass term of gauge field. And here we have a gauge field due to this mixing term, we have uh, the gauge field turn into phi 2, phi 2 turns into gauge field. And the coupling is really given by ma times uh, k mu, and it's propagated phi 2 minus ma k mu. From here, uh, you can just restore how the, uh, the crack hole structure for the massless uh, gauge field up here, k mu, k mu, um, k square. So, so if you include both um, mixing term and massless mode, so you can restore the correct uh, whole structure for the H field. But the, um, so in other words, this phi two by using uh, the cancellation with the phi two and the mass, this this really uh, the degrees of phi two. Really turns into, and in other words, this degree of freedom phi 2 really turns into mass of the um, gauge field. So that's how the test is explained in the Higgs mechanism. But my lecture uses integer gauge to explicitly see physical degrees of freedom and mass term in gauge field. Um, okay, so that's the uh, Abelian Higgs mechanism. Um, I think I give you most of the answer to problem two and problem three today. Um, and from next time, uh, so next week there's no lecture because of holidays. And uh, May eleventh, I will talk about standard model. And I don't know, when, do you, does anybody know the when is the exam date of this course or? I don't know. I mean, just official exam day. I'm not sure if I have exam or not yet. But does anybody know official exam date this for this course? How many lectures are left? Does anybody know that? Just tell me via WeChat. If you know all are, all are left. <laughs> anyway, so from 11th, I'm going to talk about standard model. Um, yeah, standard model. And then, uh, yeah, so from there, you can just listen. Yeah, even though I gave you a homework, every, uh, homework 6 in the e-learning, but everything is written in test and share. Um, and uh, I will talk about a bit more particle physics from the lab. And uh, I also want to know that the, how many of you guys will come back to Fudan at the time of May 11th? Should I give the lecture in classroom? If some of you guys will be present at Fudan, I may give you a uh, um, lecture at the classroom. Of course, I will do the of course live stream at the same time. But um, if somebody will be back to Fudan, and then want to have to, like a really uh, lecture at the classroom. I may set up classroom and do real lecture while also I'm doing the live streaming. So tell me if you are back and want to attend the lectures, you reach out and then does any if you know about the how many lectures are left and how many when is the official exam date? Just tell me. And if you have a question, just tell me also. I will wait five minutes, like a yeah, three, two, a few minutes, maybe five minutes. Just tell me if you have. <sighs> oh. 
okay. Oh, okay. Somehow it's not allowed to take a course at the classroom. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe you, you can come to my my office in the case. Or anyway. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. I, I have three chair in my uh, office, so if you really want to listen to my <laughs> live lecture, you can come to my office and then sit down here, <laughs> or whatever. Any questions? Okay, so we are already going to the climax of our lectures. It's, get, it, it's getting fun, right? It's more fun, right? Uh, now, we, you understand the Higgs mechanism. Spontaneous symmetry and chiral symmetry work in QCD scale. It's much more interesting. And then, from next time, I'm going to talk about a bit more particle physics. I think exam. June 15. Oh, there, there are, in that case, there are more than three lectures I can find. I don't know, we'll see. So, I will talk about the particle physics next time. Uh, I, I will actually go a little bit, uh, how to say, backwards to history. I will talk about, um, how to say, what is it called? Um, yeah, like a Lian, this CP violation song, CP violation, and also this uh, Gelman, Gelman Nishi, uh, what? Uh, what is it called? I forgot. Um, so, yeah, Gelman Nishi, Manakano. Role for for hadrons and also this meson meson and also I mean quarks yeah Lian CP variation B A B M or fan of B A model um, yeah that's what I'm going to talk about. Then after that, I'm going to talk about the electric weak theory. Yeah. And then... Yeah, electric weak theory and the Higgs mechanism. After that, I will talk about... Uh, no, no, sorry. No CP variation. Parity variation, sorry. Parity variation of the Lian, so not no CP. And then, then after that, I will talk about the Kobashi Maskawa, Kabibo Kobashi Maskawa, CV violation song. And uh, if time permits, I will talk about the neutron oscillation. Hopefully, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, seems to no question today. Is it too easy for you? Um, okay, then I will finish this, today's lecture. Um, so, which do you prefer next Friday Q and A session? Do you do you do you want Q and A session on Friday or week after? Which which do you prefer? Maybe next this Friday. I don't know. Or next Friday. Uh, Friday next week. Which do you prefer? Or both? Okay. Okay. Let's continue with schedule this Friday. Um, um, 
And before then, uh, I think uh, hopefully my peer will create a uh, uh, solution and also create a homework. Homework. Okay, so let's meet on Friday. Bye bye. Thanks for listening.